The third program is influence coefficient method program. We also did a problem of the same kind in the last lecture when influence coefficient method, but we derived the influence coefficient matrix directly in the last lecture. So, the mass matrix and stiffness matrix are again given an input. So, it is standard for all the programs. It inverts the mass matrix, I am sorry, the stiffness matrix and gets the influence coefficient matrix. One can directly also get the influence coefficient matrix, which we did in the last lecture. I think you can verify back the solution procedure in the last lecture. For the completion sake, let us try to do that in this example. So, this is the coding for the classical Eigen solver, which I just now showed you. So, the complete coding it continues from here, the coding continues after this it continues here. I am sorry for the alignment of the code, because it cannot come on the same page. So, please continue the code from here to here after this line this is the next line ok please continue the code sample input is given sample output is also known and you can see here the plot which has been just now discussed. Similarly, the coding for Dunkerley is also shown on the screen now we have already explained different segments of this code and we also have the sample output which is being plotted from the screen. Now, the influence coefficient method coding is available but I am interested to estimate the influence coefficient matrix without inverting the stiffness matrix. This code actually inverts the stiffness matrix, it inverts the stiffness matrix to find the influence coefficient matrix, but I can directly find the influence coefficient by the first principles which I am going to do now. So, this is the problem, let us write down the problem, this is m and these are all k the degrees of freedom are this is x 1, this is x 2 and this is x 3. So, influence coefficient is nothing but the flexibility. So, flexibility is give unit force and find the responses. So, I say k alpha 1 1 where alpha is the influence coefficients in the given matrix and this is going to be k alpha 1 1 minus 2 1. Similarly, for the next the arrow is reversed and this spring is going to compress which will be k alpha 2 1 minus 3 1 and again this arrow will be reversed. So, one can notice very well here the second subscript in all will be 1 indicating we have given unit force in the first degree and we are getting the first column of the flexibility matrix. Okay. Let us do for the second case. So, give unit force here. So, obviously, this spring will try to pull it back. So, k times of alpha 2 2 minus 1 2 and the arrow is reversed and this is going to be k times of alpha 1 2 and this spring will try to compress. Therefore, this is going to be k times of alpha 2 2 minus 3 2 and this spring is reversed. Similarly, for the third degree unit force. So, this is supposing k of alpha 3 3 minus 2 3 which will be reversed with this spring. This will try to pull the mass back which will be k times of alpha 2 3 minus 1 3 which will be reverse here and this will try to pull this back again which is k times of alpha 1 3. So, once this is done 
one can write the equilibrium equations and try to solve and get the influence coefficient matrix. For example, let us do for the first degree. So, I am referring to this figure. So, I am writing it as 1 is equal to k alpha 1 1 plus k alpha 1 1 minus 2 1. I can also write k alpha 2 1 k alpha 2 1 minus 3 1 is equal to k alpha 1 1 minus 2 1 k alpha 2 1 minus 3 1 is 0. So, this implies that k cannot be 0 therefore, alpha 2 1 minus 3 1 is 0 which implies alpha 2 1 alpha 2 1 is actually equal to alpha 3 1. Substituting this back in the second equation the left hand side will become 0 which says that alpha 1 1 is also equal to alpha 2 1. Substituting that back in the first equation you will see that alpha 1 1 becomes 1 by k which are now true for all the cases. So, alpha 1 1 therefore, alpha 2 1 is also 1 by k and alpha 3 1 is also 1 by k. So, that is the first column. One can similarly do for the second column and third column which we did in the last class last lecture please see that. So, the alpha matrix can be simply said as 1 by k of 1 1 1 that is what we got the first column 1 2 2 and 1 2 and 3. So, let us see what did we get from the computer program. So, one can see here for giving the mass matrix and stiffness matrix I get the influence coefficient matrix as 1 by k multiplied as anyway out. So, 1 by k is anyway here. Okay. So, first column which is as same as what we got second column and third column. So, the matrix exactly is same as we obtained from the program. So, once we know this then this coding estimates the fundamental frequency and mode shape and the fundamental frequency now is 0 0.445 and the mode shape is first mode shape is this value which closely compares and agrees with the previous methods. The next is the stored large method which we also solved the problem in the last lecture we maintain the same degree of freedom mass value and stiffness values as entered in this case. But please note here the entire mass matrix and stiffness matrices need not be given you have got to give only the value of m 1 m 2 and m 3 then k 1 k 2 and k 3 we do not have to give the mass matrix and k matrix please note in the earlier case we are supposed to give the mass matrix completely and the k matrix completely row wise. Okay. But in this coding it does not require you to give the mass matrix and k matrix you have to only give the mass values and k values with a space bar in each row. Okay. This is the mass value this is the k value. Once you do this the code actually identifies and computes the cumulative deflection finds the mode shape 
thus iteration and then from the iterated value it picks up omega n square the fundamental frequency and then also picks up the mode shape. Let us see the sample output what we got from this code it is 0 0.445 and this is my vector. You can see this value closely agrees with what we have in influence coefficient method. We have 0 0.445 and the vector is 1 1.2.25 you can see here this is again 0 0.445 1 1 1.8 2.25. So, the values are exactly matching and surprisingly you will also notice we had exactly obtained the same values close to this by hand calculation in the last lecture. So, you can compare them. So, the computer program what we explained to you is exactly in the same line as the computer methods what we discussed by hand in the last lecture. The last one is the Rayleigh Ritz method, which we also explained in the last lecture, and we solved the problem using Rayleigh method. Similarly, please note, friends, in this method also we have to give the value of m1, m2, and m3. Similarly, k1, k2, and k3. In this problem, all m's that is m1, m2, and m3 are actually equal to m, so they are taken as unity. Similarly, k1 k 2 and k 3 in this problem are taken as k and we have entered 1 1 1. You do not have to give the mass matrix and k matrix as an input for this problem. You have to give only the values of independent stiffness and mass a row wise as you see in the screen here. Once you do this it assumes an initial mode shape here because we are looking for a fundamental frequency all are taken as positive. Okay then it calculates the mode shape, then it calculates the fundamental frequency, let us see the output. So, you get 0 0.445 and this is the vector, so the eigen vector the first mode shape which is exactly same as you obtained by the previous methods and this value also matches with what we have worked out by hand in the last lecture. This is the coding for stored line method which is shown on the screen now, this is the sample output and this is the coding for Rayleigh Ritz method which is shown on the screen now and that is the sample output. We have compared the results and they were all in good agreement. So, let us make the summary. So, the summary says we learned computer methods of determining natural frequency and mode shape of multi degree freedom system models in dynamic systems. The methods learnt were classical eigen solver method, Dunker Lee method, influence coefficient method, Stored law method, and Rayleigh method. We picked up sample problems. We also gave you the computer coding. We showed you the sample outputs okay, and they were found to be in good agreement with hand calculations what we showed in last lectures. I think friends now if I am able to obtain the mass matrix for offshore structural system and stiffness matrix for offshore structural system I should be able to obtain omega and phi for the dynamic system in all degrees of freedom okay. that is the outcome of this particular set of programs what we did for dynamic systems. In the next lecture, we will start discussing about the damping matrix, which is also one of the important issue as far as offshore structures are concerned. Thank you very much.